I think when you live in Tunisia, you don't realize how isolated this country is. Um, you live under the impression that we're on the Mediterranean, uh, Europe is so close, you get like 3,000 uh, satellite channels on your TV station, you're having 6 million tourists a year coming to the country. You never realize, those indicators do not allow you to realize that you live in a country that's very isolated. So when I went uh, to the U.S. and I studied there, I started being, uh, I contacted the national radio uh, station and, and asked them if they can give me 15 minutes so I give them news from the United States. And every Monday night, uh, they would call me and I speak for like 20 minutes on the national radio, the governmental TV, giving the news of the U.S. And that program got really popular, so people uh, would really ask me uh, every week and uh, that uh, to ask, talk about certain subjects, they would have questions, people will stay up late at night to listen to that 20 minutes of like... Uh, and those news is pretty much everything. So when I came back to Tunisia, uh, people uh, in a private radio station asked me to uh, keep doing that. So that's how I got my step in the, in the system, uh, to, to be on a radio and, and basically I got like a 10 minutes show called The Next Big Things. And every time I take a concept that's very popular in the US and explain it to Tunisian and say this is going to be the next big thing in Tunisia. And people wanted to have more than that. So they, they said, why don't you do another program? And I was like, if there is something I really want to do is to talk about social media on air because the concept of like uh, social media invading the broadcast and radio and TV space was not in Tunisia yet, although in the US you could see that uh, uh, bloggers were making it on like CNN to discuss about uh, issues that were coming up, commenting on other issues, others were having radio shows and things like that. So I didn't really invent this, uh, this thing, but I was the first one to suggest that idea. And basically, uh, they accepted it. Why not talking about social media? It's like, Facebook is so much fun, let's talk about it. And then I used that radio show with my colleague Emna bin Jama, she's a, another radio host who was also a blogger, and we went to the same high school together. And we made that show called Net Show, uh, the place where all the bloggers would come and discuss about the issues that were really crucial. And this radio show uh, allowed us, basically, uh, to use the internet as an excuse to talk about the issues that were happening in Tunisia. And I guess uh, this was not something that the government was happy about, because we would even interview people who were exiled, who were not allowed to speak on air at all. And we introduced him, hey, a blogger from Holland <laughs> uh, wrote this and this and said that, you know. To the random person listening to the show on his radio, he does not realize how um, threatening this was for the show itself or for the person talking, but I guess the government spotted us. And, and that was the first international exposure that Tunisia got about the unrest and the protests that were happening. And Ben Ali uh, uh, got advised by his uh, advisors to basically call the radio uh, owner and and then have them stop the show. And, and we got the show uh, censored for like a month throughout the revolution. And then the revolution happened and, and Ben Ali left and now the show is still going.